Welcome to Developing for Auto Scaling on Azure. My name is Thomas Mitchell. I'm an Azure content author at Cloud Academy, and I have over 25 years of deep IT experience, several of those with cloud technologies. The term auto scaling refers to the process of automatically allocating resources in order to allow an application to meet performance requirements. As the amount of work grows, applications sometimes need additional resources to maintain a desired level of performance and to satisfy service level agreements. As workloads decrease, additional resources are no longer necessary. As such, those resources can be deallocated in order to minimize costs. By taking advantage of elasticity of cloud-hosted environments such as Azure, auto-scaling eases management overhead by reducing the need for an administrator to constantly monitor an application or system's performance and to make decisions about modifying resources. There are two key ways that an application can scale. These include vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Vertical scaling is often referred to as scaling up and down. This type of scaling refers to changing capacity for a resource. An example of vertical scaling would be moving an application to a larger virtual machine. Vertical scaling, as a rule of thumb, generally requires that a system experience some amount of downtime while the system is being redeployed with the upgraded resources. As such, vertical scaling is not typically automated. Horizontal scaling is referred to as scaling out and in. This typically refers to the addition or removal of instances of a resource or application. Horizontal scaling allows an application to continue running without any downtime while new resources are provisioned for it. After additional resources are provisioned, the application or solution is then deployed across the new resources. If the demand for the application or resource drops at any point, these additional resources can then be deallocated and removed cleanly. Most cloud systems, including Microsoft Azure, offer support for horizontal scaling. It's also important to note that auto-scaling typically applies to compute resources. Although a database or message queue can be horizontally scaled, this typically involves data partitioning, which is often not automated. A functional auto-scaling strategy often involves monitoring systems at the application, service, and infrastructure levels. These systems capture key metrics that can include response times, CPU utilization, memory utilization, and other key metrics. An auto-scaling strategy also involves decision-making logic that evaluates these metrics against predefined thresholds or against predefined schedules. This decision-making logic then decides whether or not to scale. The actual components that scale the system are also an important piece to an overall auto-scaling strategy as are testing, monitoring, and tuning of the auto-scale strategy. This ensures that the auto-scaling solution functions as expected. Microsoft Azure offers built-in auto-scaling mechanisms that are useful for addressing these common scenarios. When planning an auto-scale solution, there are a few key points to consider. First and foremost, you should consider whether you can accurately enough predict the load that an application will experience. You need to do this in order to be able to leverage scheduled auto-scaling. Doing so allows you to add and remove instances in order to meet anticipated increases in demand. In cases where this is impossible, you should use reactive auto-scaling, which is based on runtime metrics. This offers the ability to handle unpredictable changes in the demand for an application. You can also combine both approaches to create a strategy that will add resources based on a schedule that reflects times when you know an application will be the busiest. This ensures that the capacity is available for an application when it's required without causing any delay resulting from the startup of new instances. By defining metrics that allow reactive auto-scaling during peak periods, you can ensure that the application can handle sustained 
yet unpredictable spikes in demand. It's often going to be difficult at best to completely understand the relationship between metrics and capacity requirements. This is especially true when an application is first deployed. As such, it makes sense to provision a bit of extra capacity in the beginning. After deployment, monitor and tune any auto-scaling rules that have been implemented in order to bring the capacity closer to the actual load of the application. After deploying an application, configure any auto-scaling rules that are necessary. Once this is done, monitor the performance of the application over time, keeping in mind that auto-scaling isn't necessarily an instantaneous process. It's going to take time for it to react to metrics such as CPU utilization either exceeding or falling below thresholds that have been defined. After you've monitored performance for a period of time, use the results to adjust how the system or application scales if necessary. If you're auto-scaling service fabric, keep in mind that node types in the cluster consist of VM scale sets on the back end. As such, you're going to need to set up auto-scale rules for each node type. When doing so, be sure that you consider the number of nodes that are required for you to set up auto-scaling. The reliability level that you choose is going to drive the minimum number of nodes that you must have for the primary node type. Anytime you configure multiple rules and policies, those rules and policies are often going to conflict with one another. As such, it's important to understand how Autoscale handles such conflict resolution to ensure that there are always enough instances running. First and foremost, scale out options always have priority over scale in options. Anytime that multiple scale out operations conflict with one another, the rule that takes precedence will be the one that initiates the largest increase in the number of instances. When it comes to scale in conflicts, the rule that initiates the smallest decrease in the number of instances will take precedence. While it may be tempting to do so, simply throwing resources at a system or deploying additional instances of a process are not necessarily guarantees of improved performance. As such, it's important to consider some key application design strategies when you are designing an autoscale strategy. When planning a design, ensure that the system is designed to be horizontally scalable. You don't want to make assumptions about instance affinity. It's important that you avoid designing solutions that require code to always run in a specific process instance. Likewise, when you are scaling a website or cloud service horizontally, don't assume that a series of requests from a single resource will necessarily be routed to the same instance. To avoid this, it's best to design services to be stateless so that you can avoid the requirement that a series of requests from an application be routed to the same service instance. If you are designing a service that reads and processes messages in a queue, it's best that you not make any assumptions about which instance of a service is going to handle specific messages, because autoscaling could very well launch additional instances of the service as the queue grows. In cases such as this, you should consider the competing consumers pattern, which allows multiple concurrent consumers to process messages that are received on the same messaging channel. By leveraging the competing consumers pattern, you can allow a system to process multiple messages concurrently, which optimizes throughput, improves scalability, and balances the workload. Long-running tasks that are part of any solution should be designed to support scaling out and scaling in. Failure to support both scaling out and scaling in can prevent an instance of a process from cleanly shutting down if a system scales in. Worse yet, data could be lost if a process is terminated forcibly. Ideally, you should leverage the pipes and filters pattern to break up processing of a long-running task into smaller, more discrete chunks. By breaking down a task that performs complex processing into a series of separate elements that can be reused, you can improve performance, scalability, and reusability while allowing task elements that perform the processing to be deployed and scaled independently. As an alternative to the pipes and filters pattern, you could also implement a checkpoint mechanism, 
which can then record state information about a long-running task at regular intervals. Saving this state information in durable storage allows it to be accessed by any instance of the process running the task. By doing this, if the process is shut down, any work that it was performing can be resumed from the last checkpoint by using another instance. Microsoft Azure offers built-in auto-scaling for most compute features. Such features include virtual machines, service fabric, the Azure App Service, Azure Cloud Services, and Azure Functions. Auto-scaling support for virtual machines in Azure is provided through VM scale sets. VM scale sets are used to manage a set of Azure VMs as a single group. VM scale sets also support auto-scaling for service fabric. Because each node type in a service fabric cluster is configured as a separate VM scale set, each node type can be scaled in or out independent of the other node types. Auto-scaling is built into the Azure App Service as well. As such, auto-scale settings apply to all applications within an app service. Azure Cloud Services offers built-in auto-scaling at the role level. All these Azure Compute options leverage Azure Monitor Auto-Scale in order to provide a common set of auto-scale functionality. It's important to note that Azure Functions differs slightly from these other compute options. Azure Functions differs because auto-scale rules do not need to be configured manually. Azure Functions instead automatically allocates compute power whenever code is running. It scales out as necessary when it needs to handle additional load. Any application that communicates with remote services and remote resources needs to be sensitive to transient faults. Applications that run in the cloud are especially vulnerable to transient faults. This is due to the nature of the environment, including the inevitable random connectivity issue over the internet. As such, these types of transient faults will often be encountered. A transient fault is the momentary loss of network connectivity and the temporary unavailability of a service or application, or even a timeout of an application that arises as a result. That being said, such transient faults are generally self-correcting. Transient faults can obviously impact the perceived availability of an application. Ensuring a cloud-hosted application can operate reliably means it must be able to respond to transient faults in an elegant manner. The application needs to be able to detect a fault when it occurs. It then needs to determine if the fault is likely transient or if it's a more long-lasting fault. In addition to being able to detect faults and what type of faults they are, the application must also be capable of retrying the operation that it was attempting during the fault, if it determines that the default is in fact transient. It also must be able to keep track of the number of times the operation has been retried. Applications that elegantly handle transient faults must use appropriate strategies when attempting retries. A retry strategy will specify the number of times the application should retry, the delay between each attempted retry, and what actions to take after a failed retry attempt. If you're ready to learn about developing for auto-scaling on Azure, let's get started.